Hey everybody, it's Bishop Randy Morgan. I'm coming to you today from my office at New Covenant Church of Atlanta where the Spirit of God is being poured out upon all people. Today I want to talk to you for just a second about the glory of God or operating in the glory. But before we get started, let's pray. Father, I pray for everyone listening and everyone watching. God, I pray for supernatural revelation, knowledge, and insight into the glory realm of the Spirit. Father, I bind any religious spirit that would keep us from operating in the fullness of who you've called us to be. And right now, I declare a release of the anointing or a release of the anointing and preparation for the glory of God to come upon the LGBT movement, affirming movement like never before. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today I was reading Luke chapter 9 and it it just began to flood my soul and I thought I'm going to make this week's Covenant Network broadcast about this particular subject. And if you look at Luke chapter 9, you'll see that it says about eight days, verse 28, later Jesus took Peter, James, and John to a mountain to pray. Very important. Took them there to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothing became dazzling white. Glory to God. Then two men, Moses and Elijah, now keep in mind, they've been dead for a couple of several hundred years by the time this was written. Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. They were glorious to see, and they were speaking of how he was to fulfill God's plan by dying in Jerusalem. Peter and the others were very drowsy and had fallen asleep. Um, So that's pretty interesting. Now they woke up and saw Jesus' glory and the two men standing with him. As Moses and Elijah were starting to leave, Peter was like, he blurted out without thinking, Master, this is wonderful. We will make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he was saying this, a glory cloud, a cloud, a cloud of glory, came over them and terror gripped them as it covered them. And a voice came and said, listen to my son, my chosen one. So it's very important for us to to read this particular passage. We see Jesus operating in the glory of God. And then when the disciples finally woke up from their nap, it says that they saw the glory of God on Jesus. And they also saw a couple of guys that had been dead for hundreds of years. And they saw the glory cloud of God descend on the moment and the voice of God come out of that glory cloud. Now, I want to say this about that whole interchange. It was glorious. <laughs> God has called the, glo- the church the glorious church in Ephesians. Through the Apostle Paul, when he was writing to the Ephesians, he said, the glorious church. We're, it, and it's not meant to be, inter- it's the Greek word doxa. And so it's not really glorious church, it's glory church or church of glory. And that's what we're called to be, the church of glory. A a group of people that know how to function and operate in the glory dimension of God. What am I saying? We must learn how to operate in the supernatural, glorious presence and power of God. Not just the power of God, not just the anointing, but the presence of God. We have to become sensitive and aware to what the glorious presence, the glory of God is in the church. God is calling us to a higher place of glory. He's calling us to understand that His presence, He wants to come back into His church, but we have to understand how to welcome His presence back into the church. We can't be a people any longer that lets God just kind of sit outside of His own church and look at us through the windows like some abandoned, orphaned child of the church that we've just said, you know what, we, we've had enough of the manifestation Manifestations, you're good. We're seeker friendly now. We want people more than we want you. No. <laughs> We have to come to a place where we're like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the glory of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press in for it. I'm going to experience it, and I'm going to operate in it regardless of what people say or do. We see Peter, James, and John at a prayer meeting with Jesus, and they went to sleep. When they woke up, they saw the glory, but they went to sleep in the middle of a Jesus prayer meeting. Oh my goodness, we should get a lesson from this. We should learn that they were leaving. Moses and Elijah were leaving the scene and the glory was about to lift. And if Peter, James, and John had remained asleep, they would have missed the glory visitation. They would have missed it. 
But because they didn't miss it, even though Peter said something stupid about let's build three churches, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was off track there. But because he woke up, they woke up, they were able to encounter the glory of God. God is calling us to wake up and experience His glory, experience His presence. It's time for us to stir up ourselves and say, you know what, I want to operate in the glory just like Jesus did. I don't want to be asleep anymore. I want to be in the middle of prayer. I want to be in the middle of a surge of power so that I don't miss it. And I want to say to you today, you and I can operate in the same level of the presence of God that Jesus Himself operated in. Now that should thrill you. <laughs> that should get you stirred up on the inside. I can operate in the same level of the anointing and the presence of God, the power of God, and the glory of God on top of all of that, that Jesus operated in. You may be standing there going, what? That No. Yes. He said, the works that I do, you will do and greater. This is included in the works, a glory encounter. Jesus encountered the glory. That's a work. And so I can have that same level of glory encounter that Jesus had. You can. But it's going to take something on our part. Yes, yeah, salvation is free, but more manifestations of the glory is costly. It says right there, right at the very first opening sentences in verse 28 of what we just read. It says, He went to pray. He prayed. If we'll, if we'll sacrifice time, if we'll begin to give away our time to God and begin to say, you know what, I'm going to prayer. I'm going to spend time in prayer with believers and in my own prayer closet. I'm pressing into the glory of prayer and, and I'm pressing into the presence of God in my prayer life. It's not enough for me to just throw up my needs to the throne room of God. I have to ascend into the glory. I have to take time where I just sit and wait and I pray in the spirit. I pray in the spirit i sing in the spirit i clap my hands i worship i lift my hands i sing to god I, it takes time to ascend in worship it takes time to ascend into the glory cloud but we have to understand the power and the the the, the strength that comes with that and the more familiar we become with the presence and the glory the more we interact the more we sit and soak in the presence the more we abide in him the more familiar will become with navigating the glory dimension and allowing the presence of God to rest on us and to operate through us so that we can not just have little experiences of goosebumps, but literally our, our bodies can begin to glow, can begin to radiate the supernatural presence of God so much so that when we walk into a place, the presence of God permeates the atmosphere and pushes back darkness. The sick are healed and, and, and people begin to see the power and the glory of God at work. And they, like Peter, James, and John, will wake up to the revival of glory and see the very presence and manifestation of the goodness and love and power of God. I want to do more for the kingdom, but it's going to take me pressing in to the glory, pressing in to the power of His presence, pressing in to, to experience it. And it means I've got to get quiet and I've got to allow His presence to wash over me. I have to repent of sins. I have to seek what pleases Him. I have to begin to clothe myself with Him. And in, in my times that I'm alone, in, in my times that I'm alone with my spouse, that, that we listen to God and that we only have those conversations that are precious to Him and, and that we guard our words and that we guard our hearts and, and we, we speak life and experience more of His presence. I want to see the glory church arise in this day. And there's no reason why the LGBT affirming movement, spirit-filled movement, can't host the glory in greater dimensions than have ever been seen before. And it'll create an awakening if we'll allow it. And if we'll press in to soak in the presence of God. Let me pray. Father God, Oh, God, I pray today for more glory, Lord. More glory. More of Your presence. More of Your presence on us, Lord. More of Your glory. 
more of your glory, Lord. More, more, more. Father, pour out more of your Spirit upon us. Increase the level of, a, of your presence and glory that we can host. Help us to decrease so that you may increase. God, bring a revival of your precious presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, God bless you. Oh my goodness, spend some time in prayer. Get to church this Sunday, wherever you are. If you can't get to an affirming, spirit-filled, glory-seeking church, then, then find you a place that, that you can sit in for a moment. Uh, get online, newcovenantatlanta.com. Go to thecovenantnetwork.com. Find a Covenant Network church near you. And as you do, just, just begin to know that the presence of God is invading His church once again. All right, God bless you. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you really soon.